did my giveaway, I realized that I had so many people, so many new people who don't know where I've, what all I've tried and what I've, all I've done. Um, as far as trying to conceive goes, I figured I need to do that kind of vlog. So be warned, this vlog will sort of be long because we've been trying to conceive for over 27 months now. So yeah, bear with me. <laughs> I'll try to make it as quick as painless as I can. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of information. So let's start from the beginning. Um, my husband and I got married when we were 19. We definitely were not ready to have children at that time. So um, we started birth control. So uh, I had birth control from uh, for a few years. And then I wanted to switch to something else because I couldn't remember to take the pill. So I switched to the double Prevair shot and I hated it. From the day that I got the shot, I was cramping. I was, I had all sorts of issues on that. So yeah, I switched back to the pill. Then I, um, what did I go to? Then my mother-in-law told me about the IUD, the Marina. So I got that place for five years. Wasn't even supposed to get that place because I guess you're supposed to have a child first um, before you get one of those placed. And I didn't. So <laughs> I got lucky. Um, had that for five years. Loved it. And then after that, uh, I had that one removed and got the next one put in because they're good for five years. Or the one I had was. And... Uh, Later on in that year, we decided, you know, we wanted to try. So I got that one removed December 3rd, 2010. So that's where my TTC journey starts. So, yeah. I pretty much, I don't know. I had this feeling from the beginning that I was going to have trouble um, having children. And the reason for that is, throughout my teenage years, I started my period when I was 14 or 15 years old. So I, I was... I was a late bloomer because everybody else in my class had already had theirs. So, yeah. Um, and I was never regular. From the time I started <laughs> having periods, I was never regular. It was never a monthly thing. So, um, yeah. Uh, I was hopeful because every when I was on the birth control, I was having a monthly period. So I was thinking I was okay. But on the marina, I didn't have a period for five years. <laughs> so yeah, um, saved money on buying pads and tampons. <laughs> so anyways, I, uh, we just continued on and it was like sort of naively going through the whole TTC, not thinking, you know, sort of putting that on the back burner that there might be problems. Um, every once in a while I would have some breakout bleeding. It was just spotting, but it was never like a period. It was never flow. So, um, you know, I was charting, but I was charting wrong because I was considering that spotting as an actual period. So, yeah. Um, I started OPKing and I would get random positives here and there and more than once a month I would get a positive and I was like what is going on here I don't understand this and I was just thinking that I was just reading these things wrong so then I tried the clear blue digitals and I was spending a lot of money on that and same thing I would get smiley faces and you know once twice maybe even three times a month and I'm like I don't get what's going on so now I, I, I know what's what was going on um, so um, let's see, I want to say six months into trying to conceive, I went to go see a doctor, went to go see my doctor, and she said, well, have you ever thought that you might have PCOS? And I was like, I don't even know what that is. And she started telling me, and she started asking about my symptoms, and I had all the symptoms. And she's like, I'm thinking you might have this. Um... So, but we never even gone, went further than that. She's like, well, let me refer you to an RE. Unfortunately, that's around the same time that we found out that I, um, that my husband was being moved to Virginia. So there was no reason to start seeing an RE if we were going to be moving in the middle. So, yeah. And he couldn't see me for 
I don't even know how many months. So, yeah. <laughs> sort of sucked. Um, we moved to Virginia. As soon as my insurance, like, went through, um, like, transferred over, I went straight to the doctor. I said I had a referral for an RE. And, you know, we're trying to conceive. It's been this long. Um, you know, we want... We want to see somebody. So they sent me, instead of an RE, they sent me to an OB to get testing done. So through through my OB, I did my HSG. I did my, um, and my tubes are clear. Uh, my husband did his semen, semen analysis. Everything came out okay. And then, um, and then he wanted to start me on Clomid. So during this time I was seeing the OB, I decided I was going to look and research into supplements. Because I was well into the YouTube community, I was watching a whole bunch of videos, and I was like, I, I want to try this stuff out. So before you start doing this, I would highly recommend you talking to a physician. Also, um, doing your research. Because some of these supplements are not for people with certain conditions. So, you know, you're missing with your hormones, <laughs> you know, so it, it can put you out of whack a little bit because you're missing with your hormones with these supplements. So I highly recommend, you know, um, talking to somebody uh, who knows about this stuff first. Okay, so that being said, I was taking a crap load of supplements. I mean, I was taking... Everything under the sun except for Vitex and uh, soy. So I was taking um, the royal jelly. I was taking omega threes. I was taking something I can't pronounce. It's like L dash A R something 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 something. <laughs> um, I was taking iron. I was taking vitamin B complex. I was taking. Um, I don't even know. I had like this whole kit of pills that I would take every single day. I even tried um, Fertile Aid for Women. I tried um, Fertile CM. Um, baby Aspirin. Yeah, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. <laughs> so, a lot of pills I was taking. And this whole time I was like, not... I was charting, but I really wasn't getting any positives or anything like that. Nothing that indicated ovulation. So, yeah. Um, also, during this time, I just I went to go see a, um acupuncturist. Because I read the book, uh, Making Babies. Which, um, if you've read that book, I really like that book. It's um, basically putting together Eastern and Western medicine um, in efforts of trying to conceive. And um, one of the things they talk about is um, acupuncture. So just by chance, I saw a, a group on for acupuncture. And I got 12 weeks or 12 sessions. Um, I loved acupuncture. Loved every moment of it. it. The lady was so nice. And like she would talk to me forever about stuff first. And yeah. Um, and I believe that was the only time that I actually ovulated. Um, it was the only time where I had, like, a huge amount of egg white CM. And I had a little bit of pink tinge to it. Um, and, yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep on with the acupuncture because um, my sessions ran out. Ran, ran out and, um, yeah, uh, it was just really expensive for me to continue without having a job. So, yeah. Uh, so, that's all I've tried naturally. Um, my OB wanted me to try Clomid 50 milligrams, but unmonitored. So, that means what he wanted me to do was take Clomid, I think it was days three through five, three through seven, I don't know, whatever, however many days you're supposed to take it, um, starting on cycle day three, and then on cycle day 18, he wanted me to test, if I did not get a positive, he wanted me to start Provera, Provera that day, and he wanted me to do that for three cycles, 
that did not sound right to me. By that time, I was really into the YouTube community. I was already making my own videos. And I just didn't feel comfortable taking this medicine and not knowing if I had, in fact, ovulated or not. And then on top of that, starting Provera on cycle day 18, the math really didn't sound right to me because I felt like I would be in the middle of my two-week wait when that would happen. So, yeah. Um... Right then, I decided I was going to go back to my regular doctor, and I told her, I've done all these tests, I've done everything that this OB can do for me, I need to see an RE now. So she gave me an appointment, uh, January, I, I think it was 2011, 2012, yes, January 2012, I started to see my RE. I came in with all my charts. I came in with <laughs> I came in with my blood work stuff, my husband's semen analysis. I had copies of everything, and I was like, "Here you go." <laughs> and he looked at him and said, "Well, it looks like you've done all the work for me." <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, great." I was already on cycle day three that day, and um, he did the baseline scan. Like he had already talked to me. He talked to me. He said, um, "You know, have anybody ever said anything about PCOS?" And I said, yes, before I moved to Virginia, the doctor in Georgia mentioned PCOS, but the OB has never said anything. And I, I've, I asked him, you know, and he basically just dismissed it. And the Ari said, well, as of right now, without scanning you, it looks like you're a prime, you know, book, uh, textbook PCOS patient. It's like, okay, so we go get the baseline scan, and he's like, yeah, your textbook. This is the pearling and everything. I said, okay, well, at least I know what I'm fighting against, you know. And my fears of not ovulating were realized. So that's why I was getting these random positive OPKs. Um, it's because, like, your, your hormones are so out of balance, it gives you a positive. Or, like, your ovaries are trying to gear up to ovulate but it just doesn't and then that's why you're constantly getting positives um that's why i wasn't getting um periods every month um i i have the extra facial hair i have um the darkening on certain areas of my body um yeah the whole slew of symptoms with pcos i have so, um, I was grateful for knowing what I was up against, but at the same time scared of it. So, um, we moved on to Clomid for that cycle, 50 milligrams, and I did not respond. Did not have a follicle or anything. So, we moved up to 100 milligrams of Clomid. Same thing happened. So I was like, okay, well, usually from Clomid, they move on to Vermeer, which we did. We started on 5 milligrams instead of 2.5. And I was like, okay, usually Vermeer works for other people. So, yeah, no, didn't work for me. <sighs> Sucked. So we moved on. He's like, all right, so we're going to try injectables now. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm scared of needles. Like going to acupuncturists was hard enough for me you know like I got over it but it was hard thinking that I was gonna have to do this to myself <laughs> so yeah um fall stem has been what I needed all along basically so far um my first cycle was very disastrous I stemmed for I want to say about 19 days, 19 nights, and I started on 75 IUs, which is the standard dose, and I had about eight cycles, or eight, um, eight scans, <laughs> because I went 75, then I went to 100, 125, uh, 150, 175, <laughs> uh, 200, 225, I think that's where I ended, so yeah. Either 225 or 250 I use is where I ended on that cycle. 
freaking crazy. Before I got something good enough. And I think it was like maybe a 18. So yeah. <laughs> then I did my first Avadril and ovulated but got a BFN. So I really wasn't surprised. My second cycle, I got my first positive. Um, we actually started on a higher dose because we needed, we knew already that we needed to start me on higher. I, uh, I, uh, I, um, responded on higher doses of Follistim. So, um, yeah, I basically need between four to five cartridges of Follistim in order to respond each cycle. And, um... Yeah, I got my first positive on that second cycle of Follistin. Um, around five weeks, or s yeah, five weeks, I started to spot, and then it turned into a full-on flow. Um, had a few um, emergency scans. That BFP, we saw one regular um, SAC. And it did have evidence of a pregnancy. That's what he calls it. There's like a little fetal pole in there we saw. Um, and then the next time I went in, we saw an abnormal sac um, with, with blood clots in it. And then the next scan, that's when we saw the two sacs. A normal one and an abnormal one. But by that point, we should have seen a heartbeat. And unfortunately, there was no heartbeat. So, yeah. Um, that... That pregnancy ended with a DNC. We moved on. We waited uh, a month or two and then went back and <clears throat> started Follistim again. I got pregnant again on that third cycle of Follistim. Um, I got to my six week and five day ultrasound. ultrasound. And unfortunately, um, we saw two sacks, but they were way too small and they were empty. So that pregnancy also ended in a DNC. Um, each time we've had DNCs done, we've had genetic testing done. The first one came back normal. It was just a normal pregnancy, so we had no idea what happened. The second one came back with a positive for trisomy 16. So, yeah. Um, that's basically why I miscarried that one. So after that second one, we had a break. It was the holidays and came back and did a blood panel for reoccurring miscarriage. And everything came back normal except for one thing. I came back positive for MTHFR. What that is, is um, basically it's a blood um, mutation where I don't metabolize certain vitamins like vitamin B and folic acid. And those are things that are needed for uh, fetal health. So um, now I take a medication called Folgard to help me. Um, so far that's all I've taken and he really thinks that I will be okay um, going through a pregnancy. Excuse me, taking that. So um, that's actually something that I'm going to have to take for the rest of my life. So, um, yeah, uh, I am, I just finished this last cycle, um, I went on to a fourth, um, cycle of Fallstim, got a negative on that one in February, March was my fifth cycle, I did get a BFP, but it was a very faint one, and ended in a, um, chemical pregnancy so yeah now I'm here <laughs> it is April of 2013 I have no idea what we're going to be moving on to or if we're going to keep on trying follow stem I have an appointment in an hour and 40 minutes so yeah um that's everything that I've tried in the meanwhile I am taking prenatal vitamins, I am taking my full guard, and I am taking baby aspirin, and that's it. So, we'll see um, where this leads me to. Okay, sorry, my uh, my memory ran out. 
But I just want to leave this by saying that this whole journey has been completely crazy, you know, having to go through all this for 27 months. Um, I've learned to sort of <laughs> put it into computer terms where I'm basically troubleshooting. Had to find the right um, medication for me, had to find the right dose for me. You know, it's just been a troubleshooting po process. Um, I've had some good times and I've had some really down times, which is completely normal. I, it's understandable for people to get frustrated during this whole process. You know, we're all human. <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, but through all this, I have hope and I have faith that one day it will happen for us. And maybe, um, you know, hopefully soon, um, I'll be able to actually come home with a baby and not you know, coming home empty handed. So yeah, um, I've had to fight for everything that I have and everything that I do in life. Um, so why should this be any different? Honestly, that's, <laughs> that's how I think right now. So even though I have all these hurdles to jump over, I'm going to be doing it. And hopefully one day, all this work will end in a take home baby and uh, I'll be happy. So, yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, just leave it below. Thank you so much for sticking with me for this long. <laughs> if you got to the end of this video, <laughs> I really appreciate it. And, yeah, um, good luck and baby dust to everybody. And I will see y'all later. All right, bye-bye.